How's it going YouTube? Formar Ranch here and today I'm going to be giving you some of my personal tips and techniques for making you a little bit more accurate of a handgun shooter. Stay tuned. So I'm out here getting ready to film a video for you guys today and I'm going to my normal spot and as you know if you shoot guns it is your responsibility to be aware of your surroundings and that includes anything behind of what you are shooting at. So today unfortunately at my spot that is a lot of cows out here on Formar Ranch. So I'm going to have to find another spot to use but not to fret. We'll make it happen. No worries, found a nice little spot inside this dried up creek bed. It'll give us a nice backstop to catch our bullets responsibly. Before I get into any kind of shooting, I just wanted to go over some things about handguns themselves that may have a factor on how accurate you may or may not be performing with the particular handgun you're choosing to use. So first of all is uh, size. Now. I know people always joke that size matters or size doesn't matter, but when shooting a pistol, size definitely matters as far as how accurate you're going to be. And it's not necessarily the longer barrels, it's how far away your sight radius is. The distance between your front sight post and your back sight. Now let me try to explain this a little bit better. So this is obviously a rough and very much exaggerated demonstration, but just bear with me. So this dot represents your front sight post these obviously would be your rear sight posts. So when it's this distance apart, this pencil is going to represent your uh, line of vision. And there's a lot of movement between these two sight, um, your line of vision and the front and rear sight posts when it's this distance apart, which you may or may not be noticing, but picture the tip of this pencil is where that round's going to go. So where it's pointing, that's how much of a shift in impact you may get just from where your eye is positioned behind those sight posts when you're shooting. So if we extend that a little bit, and again this is obviously going to be exaggerated guys, but just for the purpose of teaching you, the rear sight posts are the same distance apart from each other. Now what's different is the front sight post is a lot further. So same thing, you notice compared to before, there's a lot less movement and that's because the tolerance is going to be a lot tighter the further your front sight post gets from the rear sight post. Now this is true for rifles as well. This does not only apply to handguns. It just has to do with how your line of sight is being forced to be a lot more precise the further these are apart. So keep that in mind when choosing a handgun. So moving into when you're actually using and manipulating the handgun, um, first thing that you really got to worry about the most is how you hold it. So that's going to be extremely critical because the better you hold it, Obviously, the more you're going to control that recoil, the more accurate you're going to be, and the more confident and comfortable you're going to be. So, I am a right-handed shooter, so my primary hand is obviously going to go on the handgun itself, and my left hand is going to be my support hand. Now, with my primary hand, what I do is I apply forward and backward pressure. I squeeze like that. So, again, this hand is providing pressure this way as well as this way on the handgun. Very nice and firm. You also want to seat that handgun as you want your hand to be as high up as it can possibly be. And what that's going to do is decrease the moment of force that is going to be trying to rotate that handgun. So the higher up you can get without going so high that the slide hits your hand. That's called slide bite. When that comes back and hits the web of your hand, that's more than likely going to be a mistake that you're not going to make again. It's not too fun. So forward and backward pressure with my primary hand and then my support hand will come up and it'll provide left and right pressure. So again, this hand I'm squeezing front and back, this hand comes in left and right, and I am now providing 360 degrees of pressure. The next thing you gotta decide is how you personally want to extend your arms out. So this stance right here, your classic, what you see a lot of police officers, you know, in movies and stuff, it's kind of cocked to one side and goes like this. That's called a weaver stance. Now, if you meet more in the middle, which is what I personally like to do, like this, that's called an isosceles stance, similar to like an isosceles triangle that you're making with your arms and your body. So 
And there's another thing to consider as far as if you're putting your right foot forward a little bit, your left foot forward, depending on your left or right handed, all that you're gonna have to consider. So typically with the weaver stance, I see a lot of guys, you know, putting their right leg out more forward, extending their arms like that. Whereas with the isosceles stance, their feet are more um, even and then they extend out. So what I personally like, and you're gonna have to try this for yourself to see how it feels and if it's comfortable for you, but I'm kind of slightly in between the two, but more towards the isosceles stance. So I, I square up my feet, I face my target. So if you guys were my target, I'd square my feet up, face you, and then what I do is I fully extend my arms and then just bring it back just a little bit to where all that pressure is not on my elbows. So again, I fully extend, bring it back, and then I'm right there, and that's how I shoot pretty accurate. Now I'm gonna give you an example here in a minute. Another thing you guys need to consider besides how high up your hand goes is the alignment. So the biggest mistake I see a lot of people make when they first shoot a handgun is holding it like this. Now if you didn't know any better, that looks pretty good as far as how you're holding it. However, you really want this handgun to point up your wrist. So I know this looks maybe a little goofy from the angle you guys are looking at it. I'm doing my best to show you. But if you hold it kind of cocked to the side, which when you hold it like this, it doesn't look as goofy. But uh, and it, it feels a little bit more natural. However, you really want to pivot that handgun to where the slide is in line with your wrist. Now what that's going to do is when this slide kicks back, when it recoils, that energy is going to go straight up your arm. What it's not going to do, if you were to hold it like this, it's going to start moving your, tweaking your wrist a little bit. And you don't want that. That's going to make you a lot less accurate, especially on follow-up shots. So line that handgun up with your wrist and into your arm so the energy absorbs nice and straight. And you'll be a lot more accurate for follow-up shots. So now that you know how to hold the handgun properly, let's talk about sight alignment and your sight picture. So hopefully you can see this, but there's the two dots on the rear sight post of this handgun as well as on the front. And I keep it the same with my pistols. I use the three dot sights, so two in the back, one on the front. Uh, that is just so that no matter which pistol I pick up and I'm shooting, uh, I'm good in my muscle memory and sight picture. It's all familiar. It all looks the same. So another thing to consider when you're buying it. But when you're looking from behind, what you want it to look like is this. So right here, this dot and this dot, the two outer ones, that's going to be your rear sight post. And the one in the middle will obviously be your front sight post. So what you want to do is you want all three, all three of these to be even. And that includes left and right. You want there to be an even amount of light going between the uh, front sight post and your two rear sight posts. And you also want this to be level up and down with those dots. So you want it all in a nice straight line across right here. And you want the spacing to be even between those three points as well. Now, if that, all that is done properly and you're steady and you have a good grip on your gun, you want the target. So if this is the bullseye that you're aiming at, you basically want to cut that bullseye in half with that front sight post. Because wherever this front dot breaks the plane of your vision, that is where that bullet's going to go. It is not in the center of that dot. That's another mistake I see a lot of people make. It is not in the center of the dot. It is right at the top. So where you rest that, that's where it's going to go. Wherever this blade on the very top breaks your, uh, your plane of vision, again, the very top edge of that blade, when it's all lined up, that's where the bullet is going to go. Okay, so now we're going to apply all those things I just went over, and we're going to combine them all together, and we're going to go ahead and fire some rounds downrange at the target. So first things first is you want to get that nice grip as good as you can, as close up to the slide as you can without hitting, uh, without your hand going over to where it's going to get hit on the slide. The next thing I'm going to check and make sure is that the pistol is lined up nicely with my wrist. So when we're good there, I'm squeezing really hard front and back. I'm going to bring my support hand and squeeze side to side. Now you notice my thumb rests on the side of my pistol and that's actually also where I've applied extra stippling for some extra grip because my index hand, my support hand, excuse me, feels the best right there. Both thumbs pointing forward. There's a lot of different methods people use and again this is something you're really going to have to test for yourself and see where your hand feels the most comfortable. So that is where I feel comfortable. Next what I'm going to do, hopefully you can see my feet. I point both my uh, sets of toes at the target, square up to it, and then I extend my arms out, bring it in just a little bit, and then I line my sights up like how I had mentioned earlier. And after that, I apply a nice clean trigger squeeze. And then I make sure my sights are lined up again. 
and that's pretty much it. Hopefully you can see that when I hold it nice and firm like that, the recoil really doesn't move my arm a whole lot. So I'll go ahead and fire a few more rounds. Take note of what my hands do, what my body language, all that. Learn from what I'm doing and uh, try to control that recoil to make you not only more confident, but obviously a lot more accurate. And see, when you apply all those fundamentals and take your time, you'll be fairly accurate. And I know this may not look sniper accurate to a lot of you guys, but pistols are not what they are like in movies. They are nowhere near as accurate as you would think. It really takes time and practice to uh, get good with handguns, but I definitely recommend you going out and trying it for yourself. Okay guys, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is try to show you the point of view through filming with my iPhone that I have out here because I can't see what I'm looking at through the GoPro and I just want you guys to see what it looks like uh, through my eyes. Alright, so through the phone, like I said, first things first is you want to line up that front sight post left and right as good as you can get it and keep in mind I am aiming through a phone and doing this one-handed and then uh, top and bottom I'm trying to get that front sight post blade even with the rear sight post blade and when that's where you want it, go ahead and squeeze off the round nice and controlled trigger squeeze it's extremely difficult but I am doing the best I can for you guys <laughs> aiming through a phone but I just wanted you to see what it looks like from behind the handgun so again right where that front sight post blade breaks the plane of vision I'm trying to put that in the center of the head and we'll go take a look and honestly I'm kind of impressed with myself considering I was looking through a phone screen to do that uh, not bad at all so there you guys have it hopefully that helped a little bit on the point of view of what it should look like when you're aiming with the pistol now one final piece of advice I do want to give you guys is that as you build up in speed and accuracy another fun way to continue working on that other than shooting at you know a boring paper target is getting yourself a nice steel target it's got a very satisfying ding when you hit the target and it's a good way and fun way to work on your speed. And I just got hit in the head by a ricochet, so we're done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and learned something from it. I do want to just put a little disclaimer out there. I am not a professional firearms instructor. Please abide by all local and federal laws and be safe when shooting and handling firearms. I'm just trying to give you what I have from my personal experience, whether it's from my competitive pistol shooting days or you know all my thousands of rounds of leisure shooting or experience from uh, my time in the military. So just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please drop a comment. Also, please like this video if you enjoyed the content and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. But other than that, as always guys, have a good one.